of people. I'm so, uh, so we have the, the chair, the assistant chair, we have a new member. Um, Kathleen, we have Michael Saka, myself, uh, applicant, or I don't know if it's an application, but uh, we have her Holden and Michael Sepatelli is in the audience. Ah, okay. Thank you. So Mike is remote. No, he. Uh, they're both here. Both mics are here in this. In this. Oh, uh, we're in the small room. Mike Sepatelli as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we have somebody on the phone. Uh, I'm on the phone. I think that's. Okay, we have Kurt on the phone. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're all set. I can't see you now, but that's okay. Can you hear? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. I'm just- Can you hear? How I'm hearing, I'm seeing Alan Baker. That's all I'm seeing. The meeting room is not- um... yeah, Can you hear Rebecca? No. Okay, so we're not quite there yet. Okay, that's okay. Is there someone else using the large room on you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Peg, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. It's seven to seven. I'll call this meeting to order. Let's just make a note that we had technical difficulties for the late start. Um, Alan has already established a quorum on plug in here, so we will pass on the pledge of leaders tonight. Are there any added agenda items? All right, moving on to uh, an entertain a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of March 1st, 2023. <laughs> Any comments or is there a second? Second. Ten seconds. Any corrections? Carrying on. All in favor? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have no new applications to receive, no public hearings, no continued public hearings. No new business. So we have the one old business, which is our continued as of right determination for 81 Winterville Road, KH properties, owner clearing and grading to expand Crapland in the Upper Review area. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, I guess, I, I just wrote a little something tonight just to echo a little bit from the last couple of meetings. Uh, Can I project. tell you that you're not coming over well? Oh, so. There oh, we go. No, no, no problem. Okay. So I just prepared just kind of like a summation statement as far as kind of what we've been reviewing over the last two months. Uh, I was going to read that to the committee here. And then I also have some photos that I took this morning that I thought I would just kind of share with you guys. Just so if you haven't been out to the site or if you haven't seen what the issue that I'm dealing with is, I figured why not bring it to you as a photo and see if that helps anything here. Uh, all right, so determination as of right is the question. 81 Windsorville Road was an active farm that I purchased in 2020. We continue to farm the property raising field corn and pasture since its purchase. We presented to the commission a determination use as of right site plan that clearly shows that we are not interfering with the existing wetlands on the property and a project that will add an additional eight and a half acres to our farmable area. We believe that a we, we believe that a farm expanding its farming operation through the regrading of soil is by definition and as of right use as described in the town zoning regulations, wetlands regulations. Your town attorney, Brian McCann, stated on February 13th, 2020, that after he reviewed the plan, he also agrees that, quote, preparation and clearing of land is included in the farming exemption. He further stated that, quote, 
Ultimately, he believes that the, ter the determination is going to have to turn on whether the activity proposed is essential for the preparation of the land to farm. That evidence should be produced by the applicant for the record, end quote. I believe at this point we have discussed throughout our meetings that the property has a huge cliff that is prohibiting me from farming the eight to nine acres in question. That the material cannot simply be pushed to the side to open up the area, that the material will have to somehow leave the property in order to expand the agriculture acreage. Therefore, I do not understand why the commission continues to say that I do not qualify as a determination use as of right. I am a farm, I'm expanding my farm. The regulations state that farming and the raising of crops is the definition of use as of right. To say the activity of clearing the fill out and regrading is any different than clearing trees is inaccurate. I'm trying to take this extremely segregated farm and turn it into one productive operation. I feel that the fact that there is a large amount of soil that ultimately will leave the site is a matter for planning and zoning to address and not the wetlands commission. I have demonstrated that I'm not in the wetland, that I'm not changing any wetlands. My engineer has designed the site to have natural contours that will not impact the wetland. I know that this committee wants me to submit an application as a gravel pit. However, I'm not running this as a gravel operation. Yes, I'm exporting fill, but what else would constitute a gravel extraction operation? Machinery, scale houses, business address, outside companies coming in and out of the site, traffic studies. I'm not adding any of this to this project. If farming is truly a cornerstone to the quality of life in East Windsor, like your Right to Farm Act states, then why are we making it so difficult for farmers to take otherwise unproductive land and make it useful? So, like I said, I've uh, I'm just, I've made like five copies, and I was just going to pass them around for you folks if you're interested in looking of the clip of, um, the, of basically the areas that we've been talking about. And I know it's kind of hard to, to describe or, you know, with these pictures, but I'm standing at the bottom of the, I'm standing kind of like at the bottom of the green. So all these photos are facing towards the big open cornfield. So you'll see like in this photo here, like I'm standing flat on the ground and up there where you see that clear, very flat line, that's the cornfield. That's the cliff that we're talking about. That's the area that is, and it, and in, in this photo here, it stretches the length of, like, as we put in our site plan, it stretches the entire length of the field. So we know how it got there. It was because this place had been mined and they had stopped mining and it left this cliff. So that is the reason why I am trying to get rid of said cliff so that I can pick up all this acreage. You can see all the overgrowth that has grown up over the years. I want to get rid of that. But even if I get rid of that, I am like on a extremely vertical slope that cannot be farmed. The last page on the back of the last page, that's just, uh, that's the hill. So if you turn onto Chamberlain Road from Windsorville Road, that's just the, the, the picture of the hill, which is, uh, which is also part of the plan, uh, the site plan there. I was just taking, that was taking that from kind of a distance, but that's a 20 foot like hill that just kind of in the middle of the property. And you see how it kind of just it cuts everything into all these little different fields. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. Like, that's kind of like how I was just going to start. And, you know, I guess you guys can come at me with whatever you got questions about. Or... Sure. Gentlemen, you are not coming across. Thank you. Sorry. How about now, Peg? That's great. Thanks, Alan. Apologize. No problem. No problem. Uh, so, I, I know this committee, this is reading from her. I know this committee wants me to submit an application as a gravel pit. That's not the case. And I, and I think I made that pretty clear last month that I'm, I'm not looking, and I agree with you, the gravel part of it 
whatever that might be, has nothing to do with our decision, has nothing to do with our discussion, is not a, something that we can work on here to the extent of whether gravel pits need permits or not. That's that's not our purview, but we don't, we're agnostic as far as that concerns. I just want to make sure that was out there. Um, Agree with, and like I said, the other thing I agree with you. Um, this, this, is, and this is the crux of where I'm at, and then I'll let everybody else say whatever they want to say is that your plan doesn't show that you're not in interfering with the existing wetlands. Because the existing wetlands, like I said last time, and based on your soil scientists report. You know, they're taking the water from this area, right, and filling up and, and discharging, filling, potentially filling wells, according to the report. Definitely, that water is coming, it's coming all different directions, kind of meandering this way, that way, getting pulled here, not there, and passing through a tree barrier, and right, and then into the various channels and into a pond and then out through the culvert. Right. So let's say, well, hold on. I just to correct you on that, like just looking at the pitch of the land, the, the land goes from like, and she can't remember. Sure. The, the land has a natural slope already that is going from like if you were to, so the farm is on, um, like if this, yes, I've driven by it. So this is Tanon Road. Yeah. Okay. This is Windsor Road. We'll just say this is East Road way up here. Okay. The, the water flows this way to things like this, and then it gets into the stream. That's the way, I mean, that's the way that the water is currently flowing. So I don't see how the removal of soil in, in our grading plan is going to change the water from going that direction because there's a, the property does taper as you go towards East Road, the property tapers. Sure. And Peg, could you hear her? I can hear her better than you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know. That's no, no problem, no problem. Well, so and that is a simplified version of it, but if you look at this area, you know, what you yeah. your plan, phase four in your plan, the, the water obviously goes in all the same direction. And that is my biggest concern, right? As, as you probably remember from last time. Yes, generally the flow is here, but it does have a lot of variation. And what your plan does, as you can see, is it creates a straight flow right through the middle here and goes this way. So it does simplify the water extensively. So this is a treat area that's multi elevation where things are going all different directions. Now it's going to be not a treat area. With sheet flow, and it's going to be one swale down the middle that goes directly into the thing. So it absolutely, I would think, I think, and I think your plan shows will have an effect on the flow of water into this wetland, both the speed, how much and when, and if it's now not leaf litter and a tree barrier, and instead is row crop or whatever, that's going to be potential for. So, you know, filtration issues. What you're suggesting is that it's going to be left open. It's not going to be open. Then you're showing right. an 18 inch. Am I accurate with saying that? Well, for it, at different points of time, it will be dirt and then it won't be in, you know, it'll be farmed, right? It'll just be farmed. So, be farmed, right. so, so it'll just change throughout the year depending on the right. farming right. cycle. Right. And in our farming plan, we, we have, uh, we, that's why we put hard I mean, that's, what, that's the plan of the, that's part of the plan of cover crop is yep. to avoid erosion. Sure. But what I'm saying is, it, and, and that would be included in that. The difference, there's a difference now, an immense difference in the way the water flows into this wetland with this plant, right? You're changing every, every well, elevation, every, every contour. How much water do you think is coming off the top of that hill into, the, into this wetland? Well, your report doesn't say that the, Soil scientist doesn't say how much, but he does have, and I think I have to look it up on my. While I'm opening up my stuff, if anybody else wants to say anything. Thank you. Thank you. 
butterflies and all this flows all the way down the mountain and comes into these ones in the park and that's all work. I don't know what I'm confused about is like, is like, you know, my thought, like, how do I mean, like, is your, you guys are throwing a lot of, like, what is, as far as like, you're concerned here, Dick, as far as like, well, what if you put fertilizer into the water and the water gets into the extent the reservoir? Yeah, um, how do I, you know, is, is that, I mean, I know, but you're, you're, you're not, you're not wanting to pass a, you're not wanting to give me my determination as a variety because you think someday, someone, someone, someone might, it's a lot of conjecture. I'm sorry, I don't make a question about you guys. That's happen. not my, that's, you, well, they're, they're not general. Like what Dick told yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going on what is being presented here. I'm like, that's not, I don't see how you guys are any project because if, if it's always just going to be what if, what how, then you know. So, I think it's a good thing to take that into some consideration for what the use of the property is and what the effects could be on the water quality itself. Well, is there an issue with the, 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 my concern is always been my concern. Is So then you have an 18 foot gravel road that you're going to construct and maintain right on the edge of the wetland all the way along here, right? Right there or above the silt fence. Just during the, 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 the Right, which is going to go on for five years at least, you said. We'll say five years, yeah. So that, that, that road is, is well within the, the, it's on the very edge of the wetlands, basically. And that road is never going to be vegetated, right? That's always going to be just a gravel road that dump trucks and tractors and everything are running up and everything. So without control, here, that's certainly an, another another significant impact. We could, I mean, we could have done it. Well, we, could, we certainly don't have to put. And, it and here's where, what I mean, it may make sense or it may not, but what you, that's what you're showing us. And we put it there. We we put it there um, because we felt that that was going to like minimize minimize exposure from the public as far as like. I hear you. I hear you. That's a, and that's a planning and zoning issue, not not for us. It doesn't like to traffic for access. We are access. The, the plan is to access it as one, like that's why the label phase is one through four, because we're accessing them through one, two, three, four. So I'm going, but we just put it here just because. It would, you know, it doesn't really affect me. I can go right in the middle. It's just that it felt like that would be a more natural stop. Is that we're going to have a, a gravel driveway, you know, uh, you know, near the, um, you know, near the uh, um, Well, see, my concern is so if this was a permitted regulated activity, mm -hmm. then what you're showing here on this plan would be enforceable. Okay. If it's not, enforceable meaning it's an as of right determination and not regulated then you could show anything you want on here you could show anything and you don't have to do anything and nobody can enforce anything is that is that really true though? because i read your you know 
looking at the your your section four code, you know, your section four, there is still there still is things that like you have to do. It's order. either regulated or it's not. Yeah, but it is but I mean but you're I would not be regulated if I'm telling you that there's copies everywhere. I just I didn't read the title, sorry. Thank you. Okay. And I guess there's just more like, I, just, I remember reading this and I'm like, well, there there are controls uh, as far as like, if you fall outside of, um, you know, if you fall, if you fall outside of what uh, is regulated or what is said of right, then you would be held accountable. Uh, sure, right. But once we say, you know, it's as of right determination and, and then somebody says, you know, I drove by there and I saw that there's no silt fence and they're driving trucks up and down through there. And then enforcement comes trotting out and says, you can't do that. You say, this is as of right. You can't regulate it. And you would be right. You would be 100% right. Right. So that's that's one of my many concerns. I'll go back to the soil scientists report. And I won't read all the, it's page three. And I think that all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Actually, probably five of those paragraphs out of the seven directly apply and and support my concerns. And we'll just go with the flood flow alteration, which is um, paragraph three. The area of this wetland is small rel relative to its watershed. Effective flood storage is small or non-existent upslope of the of the above the wetland. Wetlands the wetland contains hydric soils, which are able to absorb and detain water. Wetlands exist in a relatively flat area that has flood storage potential. Wetland is ponded water. The signs are present of variable water level. Wetland receives and retains old land or sheet flow runoff from surrounding uplands. In the event of a large storm, this wetland receives and detains excessive flood water. Valuable property structures or resources are located in or near the floodplain downstream from the wetland. This wetland water course is sinuous and diffuse and channel flow velocity is affected by this wetland. So since if you just take that one thing, if you change how the water flows in this wetland, you are effectively changing how this wetland operates. And that's why I'm saying that it's a regulated activity. And what would you, I mean, like, so then what is, like, okay, let's let's the department process. What is, what is the thing that you would want to see done differently about how the water is? Flowing? Well, if we were going to. So here's the thing. No, and, and and this is the point I was making before. So the plan, say we said, you said, okay, you know, I'm going to come with a plan. This is, we agree, this is a regulated activity, whether we agree or we don't, we come to that point, let's say, and you say, I want a permit, and you present this plan. Now we can say, okay, you've captured the road control in this place, you know, you've got it changed, and you have a plan, and it's all written down here how you're going to do it, and we know we can enforce it, and that's my point. Like we come to this, and then it's enforceable. So if the wet, if we go through there, and, and we would like to go through permits about annually and take a walk, you know, by the enforcement officer, like before the season turns to the wet season, to make sure all the erosion controls are. And we often have to say, hey, you know, that needs to be fixed. People are just busy, and you know, and they may not realize, you know, you weren't out there for a month, and something happened, and you know, the erosion control was down. So those are the kinds of things that we can enforce. And that's my concerns. Without the permit, we can't enforce this. If we say this is, is you know, an unregulated activity, then it's unregulated activity. And what I'm saying is because of the fact that this changes significantly the flow of the water into this wetland, it makes it significant. And I think it should be regulated. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying we don't think you should do this project. I think the project is laudable and desirable, right? But it needs to be a permit. So how does that work with your determination of your set of rights? That's well, what I'm that's what I'm going back to because I understand what you're saying. I fully understand what you're saying. Okay, as far as you wanna you wanna have control. But that flies in the face of your guys' determination of the rights. Because I don't have control determination of the right. Is there any of the right? Are they performing? Are they are they doing some of the activities? Are they working in the wetlands? No, no, I'm not working in the wetlands. Now you have to start off if I'm going to affect a, a, a 
The state would give you a, maybe a grant to, and they did it to my neighbor on Spring Street. They put a fence to keep them a little further away from that wetland because we all we all know it's not good, right? Right. Sure, and and, 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 I, and I will agree and concede 100 that the 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 farming agriculture exemption is heavily stacked in the favor of agriculture, no question about it. But the fact that we're even having a discussion implies and is true that there is the line moves back and forth and there are times that we have to say it's a regulated activity i spent some time since last meeting going through uh it was from 2021 went through this book here and it has a number as a what, what is the book I'm it's a connecticut land use law for municipal land use agencies it's a training and they just go through like all the recent case law from planning and zoning and wetlands and you name it there's a number of cases in wet you know, wetlands related cases in here for that year and um only a couple of them are as of right determination but against guilford um this guy uh, kind of had a different but it was an agricultural example he was going for and they took they they said you know no it's not an it's not an exemption and he took it to court and he lost because in that situation that was it was right for the wetlands agency to make the decision that they made so and it falls both ways there's some that the that the that the farmer wins so it's not an automatic it's just because you're a farmer and you, and you have land that has wetland doesn't mean that what you're trying to do these changes that you're going to that you're proposing are just exempt it may be and 90 percent of the time it is but i think in this case just looking at this plan i think that this has an impact and should be regulated and, and let me read you're basing that on the idea that this is what you think it's all going to be yeah. Yeah. I just, I really what my plan is. can you give the phone back to herb Sorry, guys. That's okay. So I, I've gone over the plan with you guys, and and like as far as like how we have we have it set up with phases, 
and this is step one, right? Step two is for us to go to zoning commission, and zoning commission is going to have to we're, we still have to hash things out with zoning commission. So, in this, like, I guess I, I view as, as this board is like, you know, like my determination is as of right. We're again, you're going off hypotheticals. What if you don't plant crops? What if you don't plant crops and the, and the water, you know, the water sets into the, you know, the water sets at a faster rate into the wetland? I'm not going off the hypotheticals that I'm going off what your plan is, and I'm not talking about. But you don't want to, you're, you've already said that you don't, there would be nothing really that you would change about the design of my plan. Just that, you know, you don't have the control over saying, hey, Herb, you didn't put up your. So you the question your, here is, should it be regulated or not? And what I'm saying is, it should be regulated so we can enforce it if need be. But that flies in the face of like your section four state. And that's why I keep going back to your section four. I mean, I like, because your section four state is. Is he in a wetland? Is he not in a wetland? I'm not in the wetland. There's nothing in a section four about me having to say, you know, having to keep animals 150 feet away from a particular way from a wetland, right? Nothing in that says that I cannot be working around the wetland. And yes, we, we this whole area is not going to be it's not going to be exposed. That's all going to come up. This whole thing is going to come up in time as well, as far as we, we can't talk about it. We don't, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> you're giving your recommendation. You're really based on the idea that I have this whole thing clear cut and the water is just exploding. And I said, no, it's going to. What I'm saying is, that expense, how does it work? That's what we're going to have. You'll still have filter from grass. You'll have filter from grass or corn or, or, or crops. It's it's not not like the topography is going to make the water seep flow to where it's not going to get. And it's still going to be traveling at a rate. It's still going to be the water that's hitting this field is still going to be hitting the wetland. The, 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 all we're doing is lowering the field. There's going to be more water. There's not going to be more water than what is the liquid than what's there today. It's going to, it's going to travel. Where do you think the water is going now? I mean, the water all like, flows down and goes into the wetland. You know, it, that going it to flows all different, different ways, all different ways at different speeds, on different pitches. Right. Well, there's a variable now, which is your problem. Well, no, I don't have the water problem. No, you're not a farming problem because it's so because the contours are so variable. Yeah. Right? What I'm saying is after you're done, it will be not variable. But I will still have a, we have a we have a very gentle, we have a very gentle slope that points towards the left. Right? And we have we'll have we'll continue to have crops that will be covering this. So I don't know like it's going to be the same if the rain shows is in the two inches of rain, it's still going to make it. It's not going to be any different, it's going to be lower. You can go to the store in the water, it's not so there's no storage well, of water on this field. Well, it says that it, I mean, the report I just read was if you read the wetland, there's storage, there's water storage, but not the field, not the field, not the field, yeah. right up to you. So I just want to read to you. It seems like our, 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 you know, you're arguing it's unregulated. I'm arguing it's regulated, right? When you get right down to it, right? I just want to read to you. This is from a, a deep, um, it was on their site. And they, they go through, we may want to read it in its entirety at some point in time, but um, I'll just pick up on their page two, I think it is. The act defines a regulated activity. This is just explaining the Wetlands Act. As any operation within the use of a wetland or water course involving removal or deposition of material, any obstruction, construction, alteration, and that's key right there, of wetlands or water courses. And so water courses, if you go back to the definition, which is the beginning of your, your guys, um, oh, let me get over here. Oh, I also have, um, but if we go to the beginning of his report, Water courses are defined as rivers, streams, brooks, waterways, lakes, ponds, marshes, swamps, bogs, and all other bodies of water, natural, or artificial, vernal, or in intermittent, public or private, which are contained within, flow through, or border upon the town of East Windsor or any portion thereof, blah, blah, blah. So these water courses, and these are all, all the pieces that water is generally flowing through right now, which are all outside of the water. Alan, move back. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. No, I need to move back. Okay. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I just can't hear you. Sorry, Peg, I, I, we'll have that fixed, hopefully. Well, we'll be in their big room next month and we won't have to worry about it, hopefully. We should be. So, and I also went through the Connecticut Farm Bureau, just to, just to stay there. Connecticut Farm Bureau says the same thing. What you're doing, no, it's not arguing. That's not true. And I'm standing outside of the way. No, no, that's what you just went over with me. Is you just said you just read me the definition of water courses. Nowhere in there did I say the you say the whole list is the same option. All of this is these are all intermittent water courses. Every time it rains in the water, flames are still to be they just said strange Oh, it's no, read it. Just read it again. Read it in your guys' packet. It says more than streams or books. It says like 17 different things. What it means is all moving water, right? That's what they're trying to say there. You can't take just two of those words and say that's what it means. It means all the movies. No, I'm not. There won't be any weeds left. That's not true. So what I'm saying is not allowed to rain on my property. What you just said is, you just said there is no live stream source. There is no live source here. What you just said to me is every time it rains, the water has to find its way out. And so because of that, the entire operation is a water course, therefore we need to rain. What I'm saying is based on setup. What I'm saying is based on your soil scientist report, all the water that goes here ends up in this wetland. And so when you change this, it changes how that water ends up here in that wetland. So again, I think it's a regulated activity for those reasons, and and I'm not saying that it's not a it's not a project that could could pass and, and get a permit. What I'm saying is it is significant, and I think that it falls within a regulated activity. That's my opinion, and, and we're not going to agree. Okay. Pass the phone down, please. Peg, some of us were at a seminar recently, Thank a prominent you. land attorney, and we had a workshop on this. And unfortunately, if we give an as of right determination, our hands are washed and we can't go back on it. And that's what the problem is, essentially. And there is case law on it. Because we talked, he talked about a certain case law, and he said they gave the person is as of right. They farmed it for one year. I'm not saying you're going to do this. Believe me, I think you're being completely honest. But once they washed their hands, it was done. And that's that's where we're coming from. It's just that by giving the as of right demonstration, go out, have fun, whatever you can get, whatever the zoning board. Allows have fun. I, you know, you've done all the work. It's all here. You got everything you need for a request for a permit. I personally, I'll vote for it. I'll tell you that right now. But as a permit, you know, I'm not trying to stop you. But you know, it's it's just where you where you are farming, and also farming a little gravel out of there too it kind of i don't know that's if you wanted to take that hill out of phase four fill in the low spot between one and two and regrade stuff without hauling other than stumps and brushing that out of there have at it babe that's 
That's an as a right, no problem at all. But to haul a lot of material out of there, I think it's something we really need to have a permit on. And, and you're good for nine years once you get it. You got five and then you come back and you get a renewal on it. So it's not like it's going to be a big hassle, hopefully. As long as you don't push the stuff all out in the street and close Chamberlain Road while you're doing it. What's the... um? So you guys have said... You said today um, that you'd be okay with changing what to the tree. You have to phone to him. To him please. So we did offer that alternative last month. Is that the most of the impact is in phase four? Right. So I think we were came back with you know, we could do an as of right probably on the three phases and then a permit for phase four was what we had offered last month as a alternative as a compromise and it's, it's the most impact on the wetland too no that's well, thank you. This is what I'm getting at. Makes sense, Jose, because we got some good to go. Yeah, I think we're going to take it. I offered that last month. I offered that last month. She's publicly. That's why I want I was coming from. And that's the only so it seems like we're working near maybe a compromise. I just want to let you know that we were informed on staff that the 65 days is up today. So we have to make a decision unless you ask for an extension. And then we would grant the extension in case you want to take it over and come back. Next month or something like that. Extension up to but no longer than 65 days or withdraw the what's the or withdraw the as right asking redo it. You know, so I don't have the permit, like I don't have a base for permit for this. This is basically the friendly discussion. No real permit application. We can as a right, see, as a right, we can take this so that counts for. 65 days there needs to be a decision which today is 65 or you can ask for an extension on the decision up to but not longer than 65 or you can withdraw and then we start the process on that's what this is so i mean i was thinking that you could we could do an as if we can approve an as of right for for phases one through three based on this plan and then you would want to do a permit specifically for phase four okay yeah. do that when you get to it right if you were going to go in order yeah okay. of course we're basing this on trusting you that you're going to put the erosion control in vision <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I'm going to do. <laughs> because, like, you know, but it's just, we are trying to improve the We are trying to. I don't think any of us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we'll see that then. And then, as far as the, the fourth or a permit for phase four, um, I'll, I don't know if it makes sense to. Well, I guess you guys can go to a base. No, because no, you would just come with a new permit on that. I, I think that'd be the easiest way to do that. Yeah. So, um, Right. 
It might be wise to get it because that way you can put the erosion control the whole way. And but so I'm going to try a motion. Peg, can you hear me? Yes. So uh, make a motion to uh, grant the as of right determination for 81 Windsorville Road K and H properties for clearing and grading to expand cropland in an upland review area for phases one, two, and three only, not to include phase four, which will be will require a permit. And your Dick. So uh, Dick is just suggesting additions to my motion. So I would add to that motion the uh, plan that we're referencing is by J.R. Russo, surveyors and engineers, map 068, block 60, lot 001, zone R3. Uh, prepared for double A LLC, 81 Windsorville Road. Job number 2020-076. I'm sorry, that was what? 2020-076. Did you get all that? Yeah. Do you want to read it back to me and see if I. Um, to grant the as of right determination for 81 Windsorville Road um, for Herb Holden Associates, is it or double, double H? K and H properties. K and H? Yep. Okay, properties. Uh, for grading and clearing? Yep. To expand cropland in the upland review area. Wait a minute. To expand cropland. Okay. Hold up. In the upland review area. Um, and um, I think just for accuracy, we'll just have Danielle. Uh, you the, the the map reference, but it's the site plan that's that came with the okay. right application. But you were looking for phases one, two, and three, not to include phase four, which will require a permit. And then yeah. then you threw at me plans reference to J.R. Russo. Um, I'm guessing this is your map block and lot six oh eight, and then I missed the next part. 608. So it's 068, block 60, lot 001. Okay. Prepared for double H LLC 81 Windsville Road. Anywhere close? Yep, that's good. That, that's good. Okay. Who's the second, please? Do we have a second? Dick is the second. Thank you. Discussion? Hi. Kurt, if you can uh, hear us, then just put into the chat. No, say I. Hi, okay. I don't know if I should be talking at the TV or, or my laptop. So that's a unanimous, including Kurt? Unanimous, yes. Thanks, Peg. Thank you so much. OK. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Danielle is bubbling. 
Yeah, probably. Yeah, but nothing for miscellaneous. Moving on to agent review reports and decisions in the packet. That's not my packet. Um, we have the images that were taken from the gravel field, gravel pit, solar, whatever that project's called. Um, I believe her uh, her little map that she marked up with the numbers on it corresponds to the pictures. So if there's anything anybody wants to discuss on that, or we can wait for Danielle to come back in the room to kind of give her take on that area. If there are any questions, this isn't an application or anything. This is just for our information as it was presented to us two months ago, I think. I believe they are, yes. I don't know that answer. We're just starting to put the picture out. Yes, yeah, so they're providing us with a weekly this report everything we're on. Oh, and Alan was asking if we're passing these along to the siting council, just as for their um, he said the email that comes through like 50 people. Okay. So, right? <laughs> you would consider that it goes to the siting council just so. They are responsible. Yeah. 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 Also, 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 Oh, it's not safe, but it's um, it's oh, okay. So, we so that's not even solar, then. No, I'm just thinking about all of it. That's what we're like. Hey, that's okay. 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 I did too. I did I did it too. I did it too. I did it too. I I no. Okay. Um, we have no violations. We have nothing for conference seminars, trainings, and uh, no nothing for correspondence. Are there any general board discussion items? Okay. As a waste deals, we need to clarify this so this doesn't happen again. So I did approach uh, the attorney with that question, that was specific. Hmm. What you wanted? Yeah. He said as long as it's within the state statutes for the wetlands, the state regulations, there are certain things that can be altered. Um, and there are certain things that stay the way they are. That's it. So that's just a matter of researching specifically what that's one of the sections that they say has to stay by what the state statute is. Yeah, we we need to we need to do something so that this doesn't because you know every time somebody wants to open the ground that they're gonna buy some cattle or plant some corn or whatever yeah. and continue this. Yeah, I think that is the whole statute and I don't know that we can put that in there, but PDPs has uh, some good stuff on their site for like model rags that different towns have done in the past. Day. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if any, if any other towns have done anything about this. It's yeah. already passed muster, so that we can start there. But I think we, you know, we look at those things a little bit. 
We all have a vote on it. Everybody has an opinion, so I don't want it. But I really, I don't know. Yeah, so Danielle, you can look into that and then report back to us next yeah. month. Anything else for general board discussion? Moving on, any public participation? Anything, Mike? <laughs> All right, sounds good. We have nothing for executive session, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Aye. Thank you for listening. Yeah. No. No. Yes. Thank you.